And here we go. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's webinar. My name is Ahmed Zini. I run MetLife's Disease Prevention and Wellbeing uh, Unit in the Gulf. Today, we're, uh, we have a very interesting topic, not really one that, uh, it's one that maybe I've wanted to have for, for, for months now. And uh, now, uh, I think the time is right for us to have it before uh, everyone like going on their breaks. I hope everyone is having a fantastic summer. Or um, if you still didn't have your summer break, I hope you have fantastic plans ahead of you. Some housekeeping before we start. So the session is being recorded, recorded as always, and it will be the recording will be uh, shared uh, with you in the next 10 days. It will also be uploaded on our MetLife Gulf YouTube channel. So uh, like if you go to YouTube and search MetLife Gulf. Um, you will find all the recordings, even for the previous sessions we have done uh, during the year. So feel free to share it with your family, your friends, your loved ones, anyone you feel will find interest in the topic in question. Of course, the regular disclaimer out of the way that uh, today's session is not a substitute for medical uh, advice and is not a substitute for you to seeing your um, healthcare professional or therapist. Before we head into today's topic, we have a very special guest speaker, Hima Mami, who joins us from uh, HRI or Human Relations Institute for those of you who know by that name. Uh, I've personally always known it as HRI, but uh, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's maybe the more common name. So uh, Hima uh, joins us from a psychology and uh, counseling uh, background. Uh, she, she has been practicing here in the UAE for uh, years and also has been certified by um, in King's College in London. Hima, very happy to have you with us today. Uh, we're going to be uh, going through some content. So one of the things that when we were going through the, the what are we going to uh, address during this session, mental health is a very wide space. So for us, when we say, OK, we're going to do a session on mental health. So OK, what are we going to focus on? One of the things that maybe have a personal, uh, I would say, uh, that I have a personal connection with is the connection of mind and body. Um, I re I have not gone with Hima through the contents of this presentation, so I don't actually know what is the connection between mind and body, but I can say from practice, uh, as someone who's been living with depression for years and uh, anxiety, that I am a healthy person when it's like physically I am a healthy person. Maybe I haven't seen, like, it's something that I repeat often in our uh, webinars, specifically the ones that we have around physical health, that I'm someone who hasn't really been to a doctor or any physical ailment in their adult life until maybe during COVID when I started like having more severe back pain because of like all the the, 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 the sitting and, and uh, lack of activity. But other than that, as someone who has had their fair share of mental health challenges, I have seen this impact my body in ways that I would maybe experience a certain degree of physical pain. I would experience a certain degree of uh, lack of physical functionality, and I would have all the tests in the world and nothing would show. So around maybe working around my mental health has helped a lot with my physical health, but anyway, I'm not the expert, Hima is the, is the expert, so on this note, I'm going to pass on uh, to her, Hima, very glad to have you and uh, take it away. But one last thing, anyone has, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to drop them in the chat box as usual, so if you're joining from the desktop, you're going to find the chat function on your right-hand side. If you are joining through the phone, you will find it in the bottom section. Hima, I take it away. Thank you so much, Ahmed, for that uh, warm welcome and also uh, for opening up and, and for the honesty of what reality, what in reality is uh, the experience of mental health, especially in a world today where, you know, post COVID, there are a lot of um, uh, relevant stresses and, and some big, some small. But today's session, let's look at how your mind and your body interplays, you see, and how it influences you as a person and your well-being and how you can contribute and how you can take charge. So that's that's the goal today. It's not to say that stress is bad or uh, uh, go in that direction. It's sort of to see how 
how your mind and your uh, body connect with each other and how you can partake and how you can uh, learn practices and strategies to influence that uh, that mechanism that goes on. So um, I, uh, Ahmed has briefly uh, uh, explained what our uh, discussion today is going to be about. Uh, since um, today is this, the next 40 minutes is going to be a bit of a learning process. I would really encourage each of our audience to have maybe perhaps a pen and paper because you can um, write down your thoughts. Uh, we do have a few exercises lined up so we could use that for that. So I'll give you a second maybe to find just a pen and paper to um, even as we go along, if you have any questions come up, you can put that down and we can address those questions as well. So if we're all ready, I can get started. Okay, so let me find my pen and paper. Yeah, give me one more second. <laughs> there I go. Right. Um, just to briefly take us through um, what the next 40 minutes is going to look like. Uh, as I mentioned, we'll be understanding uh, the mind and body connection in itself, how your body affects your mind, and how your mind affects your body, the relationship vice versa. And, uh, you know, definitely tapping into what our previous understanding of this uh, of this connection has been and what the new research says. Also, um, how we can use this to respond to our daily life stresses. Like I said, there are some stress that are more um, the things that you can work through, but some stresses are a lot more. Uh, um, uh, uh, more long lasting. So how can you work through this process? Also, um, uh, uh, a huge part of what we'll be talking about today is the brain. And I don't plan on nerding out, but just to understand, because your brain is a part of both. It's, it's a part of the mind. It is also a part of the body. So it's important to understand the mechanism that goes on in your brain and how it influences the rest of your body. Uh, your gut, your uh, your senses. So that might be useful for you to have an understanding of is 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 it the stress that is driving you? Is is it you? And also we'll be talking about how you also talk to yourself when you're experiencing these things. I don't mean to jump the gun, but let's uh, 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 as we move along. Uh, if you have thoughts and questions, please write it down. And also uh, also one more thing, uh, I would uh, really want you guys to actually. Uh, indicate what you hope this next 40 minutes will do for you. What are the questions that you have? So what do you want to find out in this session? So how will this session be most useful for, um, for you? Uh, if you have any specific experiences or memories, go ahead, put that down. Um, so to start off about the mind and body connection, this isn't uh, as much as it's a popular um, idea now it's not really a new discovery it's always been a part of treatment protocols you know if you will look at um, um, faith-based practices or shamanic practices or e you know a lot of the eastern practices um listening to the mind and and really absorbing the input that the mind has to say was a part of uh, 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 uh treatment protocols back then but then later on as you know um as the biomedical model came in, clinicians wanted to understand the, the body as a machine and how, how each organ played a role, you know, and a lot of focus was given on to how the biology works and how one, uh, uh, one mechanism triggers the other. But unfortunately, it completely um, forgot to take in what the person's narrative was the person's experience was, what the feeling and emotions said and indicated. So uh, uh, over time, of course, uh, this changed and now a lot of modern facilities um, uh, give a more holistic uh, uh, approach to treatment, uh, treatment and treatment planning. We'll get into that. Uh, just to get back, uh, maybe something that'll be a bit funny to know that uh, when more disorders were discussed back then, when it was the biomedical model, um, there was this uh, uh, understanding of um, the wandering womb, the, literally the wandering uterus around the body. So people uh, back then would theorize that there is there is a there is a uh, abnormality in irritability and hysteria is experienced by 
a woman if she doesn't have a baby and her womb is sort of wandering near the upper throat area. So of course, all this was a misconception because back in the day, human dissection wasn't wasn't permitted and and um, listening to the person, tapping into the, 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 to the emotion of the person was unfortunately really cut off. But today, if you look at, um, you know, a major care, uh, uh, if you take a cancer care unit, pain management is something that is really a, 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 a huge part of cancer care. If, if you, and, and a huge part of pain management is the psychology of how pain is experienced. So it really does, uh, uh, and, and, and that was just an example. Most healthcare setups really uh, accommodate uh, um, a holistic perspective, which is where nutrition is taken care of. Um, even in cancer care units, yoga is something that is provided. So the idea has moved from a biomedical model to a biopsychosocial model, where a person and their context is understood. The person's setting, the person's culture, the person's relationships, and how how these contexts uh, make the person feel, bring about emotions in the person. This is quite central to, you know, while um, while delivering treatment or healing in general. Um, we can now maybe come to the big question, you know. So how uh, can your um, thoughts influence your body? Can your feelings influence your your body and your day? So I uh, I would encourage um, our audience to actually think of an exercise. Maybe just today, the first thought that came out of um, as you came out of bed, as you woke up, the first thought you had as you woke up and got out of bed, or perhaps the thought you had while you were driving. Now I'd like you to reimagine that um, reimagine that memory. I'd like you to now start noticing what you feel in your body. It could be anything, it could be a stressor, it could be a good memory. What do you feel in that body when in your body as you revisit that memory? So your mind is able to take you to a place, to that same place where you were before, and you can sense those reactions in your body. This is, uh, uh, it, 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 uh, there is something called mirror neurons where a person is able to, uh, um, experience the experience the same uh, uh, for example if somebody is sharing an experience and the listener is able to share have the neurological pathways very similar to the to the person who was talking and i think it's it's, it's similar when you're watching something on tv somebody is talking about an experience the the person who is the audience of the tv uh, who's watching the tv will have the same emotional response as to the person uh, i mean with exception of trauma, of course, things like that. But they, 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 those mirror neurons, it, it allows you to um, uh, uh, match with the person that uh, that is being around you. I'm sorry, coming back to the um, how uh, stress, you know, uh, comes in your body. Um, facing stress is is a normal part of life. It, uh, you know, like we mentioned before, it could be something serious. It's, but it is uh, a, a huge part of um, processing stress is to accept that it is a normal part of body and, uh, of daily life. And also what needs to be normalized is what one does when, um, when stress is experienced to cope with that stress. Uh, and I'm directly referring to, you know, taking taking a break. Sometimes at work, it, it, it's not when, when you feel heightened in terms of your stress response. Um, uh, it might not look professional to take a break, but that is exactly what I'm talking about. That, to some extent, extent, extent needs to be uh, seen as a normal part of um, functioning and needs to be seen with a lot of empathy. Um, we are going back into uh what stress actually is and how how it is actually being a useful uh mechanism um so if you were to understand stress there are two types of stress right there is something called the use stress and there's something called the distress let's talk about use stress use stress in general allows your body to get ready for example if you're writing an exam for example when you are preparing for a wedding it's it's alerting your body in a way 
to prepare, I mean, preparing your body to react, to respond to a situation that needs action from you. Now, what happens when it is distress? Distress is the second part where you have uh, your autonomic nervous system is pushing you into a place of um, dysfunction where you feel like you want to flee the situation. Um, and, and also it's, it's a part of what you tell yourself, can you or can you not manage the situation? So distress is, and long-term exposure to distress is when uh, stress, the idea of stress becomes a problem for the body. Now, as we go, we'll talk how long-term stress and what uh, uh, the mechanisms that happen within the body, how the effects of those, uh, uh, your neurotransmitters and your hormones, how it affects your body. So, um, when you have, um, when you're experiencing stress, there's something called cortisol. It's a, um, neurotransmitters uh, encourage cortisol to be produced in your body. And the minute cortisol comes in, it's, there is a series of actions that take place in your system. So uh, it, 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 it is actually what creates your um, alertness, you know, your pupil, pupils to dilate, your short, shallow breaths, and, and that sense that you need to be proactive. Um, now, what happens is long-term exposure to this really, uh, long-term exposure where your body doesn't get a break to find that reset state, that resting state. Uh, the body, it, it, what is stress, I mean, what is supposed to be helping you, unfortunately, it turns around and, and it starts attacking your own system. Your immunity really goes down. Now, something that I missed out earlier to share was psychoneuroimmunology, where uh, it's a, uh, the way you feel, the emotions that you go through really affects your Im immunity, immunity level. And this is, uh, 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 and heightened cortisol levels have shown that your immune, uh, that it affects your immunity. Also, another, uh, 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 one of the most common um, illnesses that we see is uh, coronary heart diseases. And, and uh, as much as lifestyle contributes to it, stress is a huge aspect that, um, that influences uh, one's, uh, 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 you know, one's co uh, cholesterol levels and thereby, uh, uh, because what technically it does when cortisol enters your body is like it really restricts you. Like, you know, for example, it's, it, this is again the primitive body, primitive man's body that we're going to, if, if, you're, if you get hurt, your blood should not be at the periphery. It should be all at the, at, at, it immediately sends the volumes of blood to your heart. And, and, and uh, this pressure that is built up in your heart, um, there, is, uh, there is a limit to how much it can withstand it. And after a point, your body experiences things like, you know, heart attack and stroke. And uh, um, it, it is, it, so what I mean to say is that it is very important to find that window, find that window of giving your system, yourself and your system uh, a bit of a break. It's called um, allostasis, where you actually find, uh, 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 change your environment to actually um, allow your system to reset. Um, we, once you are, um, once you're able to do this, and, and again, like I mentioned, we'll be talking a bit about strategies and, and, and knowing a bit in theory, uh, of the theory itself makes a bit of um, difference of what, now I know what's going on in, in my system. Um, I have, a, a, also another thing that happens is, unfortunately, heightened cortisol levels literally shrink the size of your brain. Like there, uh, there is this region called the prefrontal cortex, which is, responsible for your um, executive decision making, your, your um, um, planning, your memory as well. So uh, this part of your brain really begins to shrink because uh, uh, the, neurons, the neurons are not able to regenerate. And the ones that are there, uh, unfortunately, those cells die. So this uh, 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 um, stress without that healing phase really has several effects on the body. And like how Ahmed was saying before, it, it, it's not just one organ. Stress has effects on different 
different aspects your 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 um, your joint pains your your even your gout even um uh, a lot uh, um as we go on we'll see like uh, the different areas in which it really affects but um finding that that break window is really important um I, i'm not sure if we've all uh, heard about uh, what is the second brain in the system it's it's uh, there is a second brain in the system it has a lot of neuron receptors i would wonder if any of you will guess so it's it's actually it's your gut and your gut is not just your stomach it's actually the 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 entire organ all the way from your esophagus to your large intestine and and if you have noticed that whenever you feel anxious or nervous about something uh you sense discomfort in uh, in your abdomen in your stomach and that is because cortisol again um uh, interferes with the natural you know um the natural functioning of the intestine and and uh, uh uh this is again an example of how your mind or what you experience emotionally how that affects your body um so i um yes um i i hope uh, we are not jumping too much and i hope this is making uh, sense like i don't mean to jump too much into biology but again it's it's to be aware of what is um causing causing like for example you're up for uh, up for an exam and you feel acidic you will kind of have an idea where this is coming from how your body is reacting um again the flight or fight uh, reaction i'm sure you've heard of this um this mechanism it's um it's it's the readiness in your body to respond to a situation outside and i don't mean to vilify cortisol to be honest or or any part of the brain it is serving a purpose that it was designed to do so but what i would want uh, our audience to to i would invite our audience to see how they can tune in to their own system and to see what works for them to identify what works for them and what doesn't work for them like a lot of research is out there that could be suggestive but it's really important to see do i think this is going to work for me so that's that and that's the process that i'm inviting each of you to um so like the um going back to our uh, presentation here um what what the state of alertness does is it increases your heart rate it increases your blood pressure um it it helps you i mean it it allows you to um breathe quicker but unfortunately what happens is um most people take shallow breaths or sometimes they don't even breathe at all so it's to be aware of that um yes i think uh um coming back to what we were talking about earlier when you have chronic stress it affects um your immune system like we mentioned before um research showed that uh, uh students who were faced with an a uh, stressful exam university students found that they were more susceptible to um um fevers um uh it does affect your skeletal muscular system like we just mentioned it affects your digestive system where you know um the 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 gut uh the the, uh, the normal mechanisms are um uh, are not not the case it it changes because all your energy is going towards pumping blood and the stomach doesn't have uh, the energy to you know follow its normal uh, palpitations the respiratory system like we uh, we just uh, mentioned it it's um people find difficulty breathing when they are in a in a state of freeze uh and your cardiovascular system is again like we mentioned how um uh, you are at a risk one is at a risk of um, uh, cardiovascular health um risks Hmm. 
Now, I would like to invite again our audience into another exercise. And, and before, uh, before we go through it step by step, I'd like to tell you what it is about. Um, it's, uh, I would, it's again to see the connection of how your, your mind or, or something that you imagine and how, uh, how that is connected to uh, your bodily experience. Um, I will ask you to maybe think of a think of a memory or either in the past or the future that's coming up. Um, uh, uh, something that you antip anticipate for the future. I, you know, you can either just hold it in your memory or write it down. I will ask you to um, clench sets of your muscles, like, for example, your hands, your shoulders, your cheeks. Um, just a word of caution, if you have any any injury, like for example, in, um, a, a shovel in the neck or your calf muscles, I would skip those sets of muscles. But just uh, um, we will what we will do is sort of tense our muscles for, say, five to seven seconds and and then sort of release and truly let it go. Like, you know, we will come start breathing, not start throughout the exercise. You will you will need to breathe as comfortably as possible but we will be repeating this about maybe twice or even thrice if that's comfortable for you and this is to see how you and your body reacts to that memory now um it does take a bit of skill to do this because it's um and and i can explain as we go later why but um, if you, we are all ready maybe we can give this a shot um i would like you all to think of something that is distressing and before we start just notice how give yourself time to notice how that sinks into your body um the details of that memory what comes to mind who was in there how it made you feel and how is your body reacting at this moment now like I just demonstrated before, I'd like you to clench your fists as tight as possible. Brace yourself. Most, I mean, most sets of your muscles on your on your body, your face, and hold that for about five to seven seconds. Two, three, four. And release softly. And you let go. Try to feel the lightness. This will last about 10 to 15 seconds. Breathe comfortably. Now I'd like us to slowly return back to that clenched state. Start. When you're ready, slowly let go. I'd like you to try and remember the same the same memory. What what do you think you're feeling in your body right this moment? Do you feel that your body is is reacting in the same extent as it was when you initially thought about it? It it may have had an effect. If it it may mean you may not feel that pronounced effect as of yet, but it's the attempt of this exercise is to neutralize the way your body reacts to anything fearful. And and, uh, and once you reach that point, then begin the self routine, self care routine. Um, again, this is kind of trying to remind the connection between how the body and and uh, the body has an influence on your mind and vice versa. Now, we uh, we we were talking about strategies and techniques that will actually um 
so the goal, like I started in, in initially, it's not to say that stress is bad. It's to identify a lifestyle or strategy skills that will actually give you a holistic wellness that will allow you to face these, stress, these stressors better. So that could be physical and that could also be mental. So these are the skills that we will be talking about a bit more. Um, fitness, a lot of people post COVID have been um, very, um, I, so I think there has been a polarization. Either people begin work out, workouts at home or they feel um, their usual workouts were compromised and they um, uh, are unfortunately, you know, have to be in a safe space. So um, coming to fitness, the, the, the activity of exercise, that, which is a little um, more intense than the usual day-to-day act -day activities, it has huge effects on, on, your, on your body and definitely on your brain as well. And especially like uh, the, the part of the brain that we mentioned before, which is prefrontal cortex, which is uh, in charge for your planning, decision-making, and, and a lot of your uh, 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 um, problem-solving activities. So it, it, it um, exercise of any fitness uh, uh, initiative that is taken uh, immediately um, uh, affects your mood. Uh, in fact, one of the first things that we, um, we suggest people who are uh, uh, who are feeling experiencing low mood over a period of time is that, you know, would you be interested in, in uh, um, working out before you put them on any line of uh, medication, your body's natural capacity to produce adrenaline and, and uh, uh, in, in, in a sense, heal itself as well. So uh, exercise has shown uh, there has been a lot of uh, research research that suggests that you know it helps your memory, it helps your attention, the way you focus, your capacity to focus, and that's something that we're hearing a lot now. That I don't feel like I, I can focus on something. So um, trying to find time or making um, or at least knowing that this is something that might be useful for you might be uh, might be useful uh, might be a good place to start from. It also like, uh, uh, you know, it, it delays uh, many, not just dementia, many uh, 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 illnesses. Um, and, and the effects of uh, 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 exercise for, on your mood in particular are seen almost immediately. Because uh, once you go for a good run, you have that, um, uh, uh, your attention is a lot more better in the next two hour window, which is why a lot of people like to wake up and go for that run in the morning so that they can feel more functional and focused as soon as they get to work, I would, I would guess. Um, it's, uh, it's when we are talking about inviting change, it's also important to see how this can be, what would this look like in your life? And what are the small changes that you can make? So ideally, um, what is suggested is that four times a week, and anywhere between 30 to 40 minutes. So trying to find um, an activity that will, uh, that will be interesting and something that you can um, pick up in, in, in a gradual, um, um, gradual way to make it a more long lasting lifestyle. Moving on to um, diet and I feel, um, the first thing that comes to mind, honestly, is that a well-nourished body and um, system is is more able to withstand stress, and and also that the recovery time needed when there is there is some kind of a threat or a, um, an immunity um, rupture, the 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 amount of time a person needs to recover from that from that shock to the system is much more lesser compared to a person who um, who may not have the necessary um, micronutrients or, or the, uh, the, the, the uh, habit of having a healthier food. Now, um, we, uh, uh, 
we are at a, a stage today where um, processed food, unfortunately, is uh, for, for some are a lot more economic and uh, tasty for sure and uh, easy access gives easy access because you know and but unfortunately what happens in there is that you don't recognize the um uh the 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 source completely because of all all the things that you don't necessarily know where it's coming from truly what has been added to it and and because of that you don't understand truly understand what is the effects of the things that we put in our system so um nutrition is something that we also each of us need to take very seriously what do we put into our system and uh and and how how does that affect uh the working internal working of our system and more uh, um there's actually interesting research that that shows that um um mood disorders are also being um uh, um treated with micronutrients. Now it's not very, it's not reached the popular mainstream uh, uh, therapeutic approach yet, but it, uh, the research or the study in itself has shown promising results where um, ADHD in children has, um, uh, uh, has, uh, there's an improved score with, when teenagers were given, uh, 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 in a way, the kind of food that our grandparents would recognize as food. So I think it's important to um, go back and look at what what our likings have been in terms of uh, what we like to have, and we all have a different um, association with, you know, relationship with food. For a lot of people, when they were growing up, um, kids were force fed. So not a lot of people like that the the or savor that that process of. Um, for many others, it's it's um, it's boring just eating this is something that one of my clients told me who they they don't like the process and it's it's not necessarily fun for them um and for other people it could be a coping mechanism so it's it's important to kind of understand your relationship with food and the kind of food that you're putting into your system now we have uh, uh we have um a model here that will remind you about the basics of um, mindful eating. What is mindful eating? It's about being aware of uh, some of the things that you can remember while, you know, you savor that process, the eating process. Um, first is um, breathe and, and check your belly and tune in to ask yourself, is that really hunger, food that you hunger? Is it, is, is it something else that the hunger is, is taking shape or form of? Are you thirsty? So these are some things that maybe you can ask yourself. Um, assessing your food, look at it, look at the labels. Um, do you recognize the uh, the names on the labels? Are they um, are they uh, are they things that you will not find in a normal kitchen household? Then you will need to kind of um, look at the level of how much it has been processed, uh, because if you don't identify the, the the contents on a label, then that does it's not it, it's it's an indication of mass production right so um and and it would be useful to look at alternatives there um and while you are uh having your food slow down enjoy the process and and take um take pauses when when you feel the need you can put down your cutlery um and and savor the 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 moment and and pay attention to what your experience is as well um as <laughs> even as you uh, you are um uh, in that process ask yourself that is are you um are you satiated enough um then you another important part usually when you um uh when it comes to food digestion and absorption of the nutrients because that's what we are talking about right so Chewing your food to somewhat like an applesauce consistency really allows your body to absorb the nutrients in there. And I know, of course, there's a difference between soup and, say, rusk or carrot. So they would, um, they usually suggest anywhere between 30 to 50 times each morsel, 30 to 50 times, yes. So it's 
it's really giving it time and this does take time right so your yeah, i i would as i would understand that a lot of things demand your time but your body and mind needs your time too so um slow down the process be mindful when uh, uh in what you do uh, yes so it's again coming back to savoring the process i wanted to ask <laughs> to guess what the next slide was um sleep and i think one of the first things that we ask our clients um of course immediately after the first um sets of questions is how, what how well do you sleep it really is as simple as a question like that you know what is the quality of your sleep do you do you wake up in the middle um do you have um um, do you wake up in the morning feeling tired? Sleep is, the quality of sleep is actually one of the best indicators of a person's overall quality of life because they could have uh, the, the best fulfilling job, relationships. And I mean, of course, one does connect to the other, but if your sleep was compromised, it, uh, um, it really, your system in itself begins to shut down. And, uh, and, and it is, it is set that way because your body does need that rest window in um, and even, you know, your your uh, your not just your body, even your brain, like your memory doesn't work the same way. Try. Um, uh, I think in university, a lot of us have tried pulling all nighters to finish a project. But how well do we remember things the next day for that presentation or for that exam? So it's it's important to try and see if uh, the seven hour. Sleep window. Uh, and if that is enough for you, because sometimes for teenagers, they need a bit more. They actually do need nine hours a, a lot because a lot of changes are happening in a teenager's body. So tune in and understand and, and ask yourself, how, how, how long of sleep do I need? What would quality sleep look like for me? And how much can I give myself that? Because of course we need to work with the, um, what you need and what is practical, I understand. But this session is to, allow you to make room for yourself, room for your mind and your body and what both mind and your body is asking of you. Because um, when your body goes through a difficulty, uh, a rupture or a crisis, it is actually your body asking for your attention. Um, coming back to sleep, um, it would be a good idea to uh, enter a sleep cycle. We call it sleep hygiene, where you um, cut off from your devices, Preferably, maybe read a book because a lot of um, people experience that that sometimes induces sleep. Um, skip that uh, coffee because that might actually stop you from, you know, after 4 p.m. or 3 p.m. Skip coffee because that might keep you up um, late at night. Um, so these are. It, it's kind of tuning your circadian rhythm to make enough time for you to get rest. Um, I, I, if there are any questions, I would really encourage you all to please put that down or if you can, maybe in the chat box towards the end, we can, um, we can get into them. Now, I think from here on, we are a bit, uh, uh, moving away from just the theory and science and stuff like that. But just now we will be talking about how your individual experience is with uh, connecting to your body and connecting to your mind and how how and identifying what works for you and also trying to see uh, how you can influence your mental health a huge part of this is actually identifying yourself and having a boundary understanding of how self is separate from the outside world and and this is what i call you know awareness you know, awareness of the self and awareness of what's going on outside. What is you and what is probably not you? What is something that you can influence and probably something that is um, outside of your influence? That's, this is a part of a larger philosophy. We can have another presentation on that, but this is just gonna be a very simple uh, exercise. Um, I'd like you to look about, um, focus your attention on the outside world by Yes, just just have a look about and 
I think I have a request here. So just to accommodate for that, I am going to, why don't I, uh, because I don't have the number of, oh yeah, here we are. Yes, I think somebody wanted to take a picture of this. Maybe if anyone wants to go and take a screenshot, please feel free. I saw a message in the chat that asked for the slide again. Oops. Okay, if you're ready, we can move along. Um, we, 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 I can share that, uh, uh, that, uh, that detail again. Yeah. So coming back to slide, uh, uh, the, the, the exercise we were doing, um, I just realized we were mid, <laughs> mid exercise. Um, I'd like you to pay attention to the, um, the surrounding and take note of what is around you. the details of the things, objects, people around you. Really allow your mind to look, be, you know, in the moment and, and observe, really absorb all that. Next, I would want you to shift your attention to what is happening in your body. We don't necessarily have to be connected, but it's just shifting. Okay, now what's happening within? I am aware of. Now I'd like you to go back to that previous observation, not internal, but the external stimuli. Look at everything around you. Look at the details of everything around you, the color. What is it meant to do? What is it doing to you? And now again, let's come back. Let's look at what's happening within us. The breathing, how you feel on your skin. Okay. Thank you, thank you everybody who has participated. This, uh, the purpose of this was to identify what is outside and what is inside. And more importantly, to tune in, truly tune in to your surrounding and to you within. It, it's a skill. And, and the fact that you can let go of judgment and tune in truly just to absorption, looking at something and appreciating it, or looking at something and 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 and, and really looking at what it's 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 um, giving out in terms of you know the, the not necessarily what it's doing to you but just absorbing all the details that it's giving and at the same time using that same skill to look within this gives information and this is what this is the skill that we're trying to tap into okay uh, now moving along I would exercise uh, I would encourage this um, breathing exercise um again these are some skills that we can um make a part of our, our our daily routine finding time for these exercises will be important we'll come to that again but um let's try a breathing exercise yes i would um invite you all to um inhale and exhale comfortably there is no um uh, uh there is no forced breathing. There is no fill your lungs hold. None of that, just easy breathing. And at the same time, I will ask you to have uh, make a hand movement, which is you move your hand up and then you push it out. Up and 
as you push out, have a look at your arm moving away from you. This is slightly borrowed from Tai Chi if you, if um, some of you will be familiar. Breathe in and breathe out. Now, if it benefits you, I'd like you to think of maybe, uh, I, I, maybe a difficult memory, not something that is too intense, but just for the benefit of um, seeing how your body responds when you try this exercise. Breathe in and breathe out. And look at your, look at your arm as it goes out, but the memory stays. I, I mean, you, you can continue to do this and um, try and notice how your system is feeling. Just the effects of breathing can be immediate, can be really, very soothing and very calming. Many times when, when we are in a threat state, a lot of people, most of us actually, sometimes forget to breathe. Or even, even if there is no threat state, like, you know, your body doesn't get the, the kind of oxygen it needs to function that it deserves. So this exercise, even doing it like early morning or mid work, like, you know, you feel like you're, you've been sitting at your desk, just maybe taking a, 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 a taking a second away for just five breaths. And I'm not, not, nothing stressed, but the whole point is to allow your system uh, a recentering, a calming effect. So again, these are some exercises that you can um, invite into your daily, um, daily life. I'd like us to um, think about uh, attempt this where before we were talking about breathing and now we are actually going to proactively and when I say proactively this is going to be tricky because it is really sort of mentally divorcing from any activity you know you are in the stillness so if we have a few a uh, few minutes just take If it helps, you can close your eyes. If you want to keep it open, that's fine as well. Enjoy the stillness without judgment. There are no thoughts. If you feel that your mind is wandering, that's okay. You can say, you can, you can let it go slowly and return back to the exercise. Just be in the moment with no thoughts. Sitting still in the nothingness. Now, if um, uh, I'm sorry that <laughs> I'm interrupting the space because I am a little mindful of time. I do want to try this one um, last exercise as well, which is visualization. Wherever you are in your space, if you're interested, close your eyes. And I'd like you to think of a place or a memory that evokes a sense of calm and peacefulness. Look at absorb the details of that space and how you feel, how you are present in that space, perhaps. How the peacefulness interacts with your body. Take a minute to soak that in truly. Imagine it with all your senses, your eyes, your touch, your ears, what do you hear? What do you, what is the scent? Now I'd like you to take a nice, comfortable deep breath. 
Ashley. And whenever you're ready, you can open your eyes. I, I hope that was um, that was a refreshing experience for some of you. And for the benefit of, of the group that have signed in, I'd really like you to share, if you're comfortable, what that peaceful place was and what it made you feel. So go ahead and flood the chat boxes. The yeah. So I would I would really be um, for myself and for others. What what people's safe space um, would be. Trying. I'm gonna try and open this. Oh, lovely. Oh, lovely. If we have any more, um, the pleasant space, um, if anybody else could, you know, would like to share. Okay, so this actually does bring us to the end of our session today, and we are open for, I mean, I'd be happy to take any, any questions, or if anything wasn't uh, necessarily clear, you can, um, I, I will uh, request Ahmed to help me out a bit over here. Absolutely. Thank you, Hima, so much. I think I'm in a much more relaxed state than when we started, I hope that uh, also our audience um, felt the same thing. Actually now still, I'm still getting like a few messages on what is the peaceful place. So I'm seeing like uh, near a river in a forest in my country, driving my car, feeling the breeze next to the beach. It's all like wonderful to read, but also and my imagination. Wow, okay, <laughs> I love that one. Um, okay. Okay. Well, for we have one minute, so unfortunately, like back to planet Earth, we have one minute, so I think we can take maybe one or two questions, but maybe I'll address a couple of things first. So, uh, first off is I've been getting a few questions on the recording. So, uh, yes, it will be shared with everyone who registered after the session. It will also be uploaded to our MetLife Golf YouTube channel um, over the next two weeks. So, the channel is MetLife Golf. If you go there, you'll find uh, all the recordings for all the sessions that we did uh, this year, including this one. Um, some uh, questions around how to reach Hima. So Hima, if you can uh, drop maybe in the chat box for everyone how they can and where they can find you. Another uh, maybe question that we typically see in uh, um, our sessions is the MetLife coverage. So for that, if um, anyone has any questions around if MetLife covers a particular kind of uh, therapy or, or, or support. So please at this, um, I would encourage you to reach out to MetLife uh, customer support. You will find this information listed on your card because the number and the contact information differs by country. I'm seeing like attendees from all over the world. So each country has its own like uh, way that you can reach us. So please uh, reach us to make sure that you are covered. And another one maybe that is relevant to that I've seen a few times is when should I seek help? At what point should I seek help? I um, I I will be happy to answer that question. When to seek help? It's when you feel perhaps ready to share, and that could be different points for different people. It depends on how uh, ready you are to feel vulnerable. And I hope you meant uh, seek help uh, um, if it uh, if it is therapy that we are talking about. Um, therapy is a process of uh, and and 
it's 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 a bit different from you know the mainstream uh, uh, treatment modality. It's not like you go to a doctor, and the doctor kind of prescribes something to you. At least my approach to therapy is, uh, of course, providing the safe space and only going to a place where the client is ready to explore. But a huge part of that process is also uh, the client's willingness. And, and also how comfortable they feel in that space. So if you feel ready to share, to hear feedback, to 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 be vulnerable to the extent that you, you're comfortable as well, but then that would be an that would be an indication. And uh, I mean, this is how I would say some people would uh, some clinicians may say there is no right time when you feel that you are at risk. Then um, that's that's when you feel it. Yeah, I think I can maybe second that from personal experience that uh, maybe besides feeling at risk, I think the one thing that you don't really need to reach that stage to act, but maybe the mo the, the key here is that when you are ready to be heard and to listen, when you are uh, maybe open to getting this help, I think this makes all the difference. We are over time, so maybe the last question. Like, there are a ton of questions that honestly I want to answer all of them, but uh, and maybe we will need to answer that in a different uh, like opportunity in the next opportunity. But maybe the one last question that I'm going to take because maybe it applies to a few of us: self-talk does it help? Uh, I don't typically brand self-talk as negative self-talk. The kind, the way you talk to yourself, I think that was what I would be curious about. Uh, self-talk is actually a, a, a good, um, you know, the, the, it, it says, interest, it suggests introspection, that there is some level of insight, there is curiosity. So I would encourage that. But uh, word of caution, how you talk to yourself, are you kind to yourself? Are you critical? Or is that is that is that your voice really? Is that criticism your voice? So these are the things that I would um, I would tune into. But self talk per se, um, it could go both ways. That's my honest answer. And I think there's one more question about the quality of the environment that affects your sleep. Definitely. I mean, if you were to, um, and my context is my little one. There are some babies who who sleep in a loud room. Some babies don't. So it's. Uh, um, if your environment does have an effect, yes, and, and in therapy, when we are trying to create a space for uh, sleep hygiene, we kind of check the boxes, make sure it's a dim light room, that you feel warm and comfortable. Um, these things are, again, checklists, but I think when uh, uh, you need to see what what is interrupting you, what is interrupting your sleep? Is it that you, uh, you use the washroom more often mid-sleep or... Um, where is that lack of quality experienced and tuning into that? There was one question, so I'm just uh, responding to that one. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Eva. I think we'll all have maybe a more relaxed sleep tonight. Uh, again, thank you so much for being with us today. For everyone with us who are still on the call, I know we ran five minutes late and everyone has uh, meetings, but you can find me Ima's contacts in the, in the chat and uh, you will also uh, be receiving the recording in the next two weeks. Thank you so much for being with us today and looking forward to the next one. Nima, thanks again. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Have a Bye -bye. great afternoon. Bye-bye.